Hello everyone, this is Issa Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, here you are in the second match of the season, and we're gonna have to pull off some pretty ridiculous stunts. Uh, I did some approximations, and it looks like things are going to be extremely close, so we have to do everything precise and actually try hard forehead. <laughs> uh, it's not gonna be fun. But it's going to be fun at the same time. That does not make any sense. Anyways, let's get straight to it here. First things first, we're just going to compute Nino's out the gate stats. There's no chills. The main thing is just defense res Ryan here. Of course, there's stuff like speed res, far trees that affect individual matchups, but the defense res Ryan is the most important one here. So, Nino here, if he max buffer, that's 91. We're gonna put Milla in range, Peony in range, and then Caden in range. Unfortunately, this panic manner is too high level for Caden, so he's gonna get panicked, but Nino isn't, which is fantastic for us. But uh, we're using Caden over Ash because he has S rank ally support, you know. <laughs> So he's going to be giving you know plus one speed, plus one defense, and plus one res over Ash. So why the heck not? <laughs> uh, you know, if it actually matters that we need fewer stats somewhere, then we might have to redo all our calcs. But uh, that is four attack for 100 attack. Our speed uh, plus six, and then plus three from Peony, plus two from. Milla, and then 4 from Kaden for 68 speed. Eno's defense is going to be 49 because field buff, then Milla, then Kaden's ally support. And then Eno's base res before she's in brazen range is still be 48 with four res 4. Milla's 2, Kaden is 1, so that's 51 res. Alright, now let the fun begin. We have to... So our play here is that we're I approximated calcs already for is that we're gonna fling Nino here and just hit enter <laughs> because the problem is actually just brave Marianne here with phantasm tome we need to be below we need to, we need to be at 34 below HP to take her out if we're not then we're gonna need to have as much HP as we can get to be in brazen range but face tank Marianne's attacks, uh, it's gonna be pretty ridiculous, I gotta say. Uh, we'll see how things go down as we run our calcs here. From my initial approximations, Hinoka is going to be attacking first. Marianne can't actually attack Nino initially when Nino's in the spot. That's the only reason why we were even considering this play, because uh, that's the thing. Also, for reference, everyone gets hit by sabotage attack, and unlike that one match, there are no res field buffs, so we're not gonna get screwed over <laughs> by uh, sabotage attack not procking on someone. Uh, that was so terrible. But uh, Hinoka here, let's see, it's 70 attack, and then 74. And then there's not and Catrio with drive attack and there's literally nowhere else for Hinoka to attack from so that is just plain 80 attack Nino's defense is going to be dropped to 45 because of the Rhine and then defense tile brings that up to 58 so is that right that doesn't feel right right uh no that's not quite right Hinoka's gonna attack Nino's res, I think, because uh, Mermaid Bow <laughs> uh, calculates damage using the full lower foe's defense and res, and they have speed res far trace. So Nino has uh, 44 res? Right, 51 goes down to 44, yeah. So that's 57 attack, uh, which means. Hinoka is going to do 23 times 2, and uh, Hinoka will be at 38 HP, so she's just going to get one shot. 
So overall, that's uh, 46 damage against Nino. Giving Hinoka an overall damage ratio of 100. So she's probably going to be the first one to attack here. Let's go to Brave Edelgard now. Let's see, there's going to be Spur Attack Defense and Drive Attack. Uh, she can't. There's no more... It doesn't matter where Brave Edelgard attacks from. Stats will be the same. So... Let's see. First things first, do we one-shot her on the counter? Uh, at 100 attack, it drops down to 94. So the answer is yes, because Edelgard will be down 15 HP, so she'll be at 46. Uh, so yeah, she only has 85 res bulk. So that's a kill, one-shot kill. So that's minus 46. Uh, how much damage is she going to do? Let's see, that's 62, 65, 68. Looks like 68. 68 attack. Uh, going into... So that's minus 4 from here. Minus 6 from Brave Edelgard's weapon. So that's 39 defense, which goes up to 50. So that's 18 times 2. Uh, which is 36 damage. So overall, her damage ratio is going to be 62. Not quite as high. Alright. Alright, moving on to Katria. She only has one place to attack from. And there are no attack buffs for her at all. So she's only going to have 67 attack. Oh, looks at it. 67 attack. Yeah. 67 attack against. What was that? 45 again. So it's 58. 11 times 2. Wait, is that right? 45 is 58. 58 against 67. No, that's 9 times 2. I don't think it matters that much, because obviously Katri is not attacking first. She's going to be at 36 HP, so she'll get one shot. Net damage of 18. Marianne can't attack, Fiorum can't attack, Triandra can't attack initially either. So it's just not. Uh, Not's going to have let's see, 50, 55. And then 58, 61. So she's just doing 0 times 2 to Nino. And does Nino one shot? Let's see. How much speed does not have? 53, it looks like. And then Nino will have 63. So she just absolutely obliterates not. Okay. Seems good. Alright, so from that, we conclude that Hinoka attacks first on Nino for 23 times 2. So that's 46 damage, uh, which leaves Nino at 22 HP. But the thing is, Hinoka's attacking twice. So Nino's going to proc Noontime on the counter into that 38 HP, which is kind of bad for us. So that brings us up to... <laughs> uh, uh, brings us up... Is that right? 33 HP, almost exactly half. <laughs> uh, wait, is that right? 46, net 35. Yeah, just 33 HP, okay. Let me write that somewhere real quick. We're gonna have to reference that later. So now Hanok is gone, who's going to attack now? Uh, well, I guess Nino's in vantage range and she kills everyone. Oh, oh yeah, so this this is where things get really dicey, right? <laughs> because now all of their damage ratios are negative. So the it's the units that are going to attack first are the ones that have the mo the, the least HP, <laughs> not the most. Um. So, Katria is going to have the least, so she's going to attack, get vantage killed. 
Uh, Triandra's next because she can reach because of not and also ascend a few arm. Tele Actually, no, she doesn't get the teleportation, so it's just purely because of not. So that's one gone, two gone. And then not can't reach after Katria's gone. So Brave Edelgard. Ooh. Brave Edelgard attacks next. That's not good because we're going to heal a fat amount. <laughs> Oh boy, this is going to be a close one then. Really close. So we're going to heal 13 HP if we one-shot. 46, yeah, that seems about right. Uh, so we're going to be at 46 HP. Oh no. What is 46 HP? That is still vantage range, which uh, honestly is kind of bad. But I guess it's fine. Uh... So at that point, it's just not a Marianne left to attack. Not can't attack initially, so it has to be Marianne. She's obviously, she obviously can attack from two locations. It doesn't matter uh, where from either location. She's going to get the drive attack buff. And both of these units are affected by triangle attack, so she's going to attack twice. And she said by sabotage attack. I don't think we're surviving this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think we're surviving this. Let's see. 59. And then plus 5, plus 5, plus 3 from drive attack. And then net plus 7 from the debuff is 79. Attack, right? Is that correct? I'm pretty certain that's correct. All right, so 79 attack. Got to write stuff down because otherwise we're gonna forget. Now we have the Cal Camino's res. So we're just gonna do it from the ground up uh, without using our benchmarker thing. So 41 plus two plus one from Caden. And then minus six from Phantasm Tome. 38 uh, <laughs> uh, 38 res is 49 Wait, no, 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 we have brazen up so that's 58 uh, So <laughs> we take 21 times 2 hmm. <laughs> uh, uh oh Uh oh. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait, is this actually Ultra Galaxy Brain? Hold up, hold up. It's not gonna trigger. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, assuming Nino survives here, do we get quadded? That is the real question, actually. I forgot. Do we get quadded here? So 53. Um, Caden gives four, Peony gives three, Miller gives two, and then minus six from Phantasm Tome is 56. And she's only going to have a 59, so we don't get quadded, Pog. <laughs> and in fact, because our Bolt Tower and Healing Tower thing gives net 15 damage, the arm is exactly at the same HP. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so Requiem Dance cannot pro This is so rigged. There's no way this is- I'm definitely missing something. There's absolutely no way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, of course the problem is we still have to kill Not. Actually, we already killed Not from the out- Onset already, so and we're still in vantage range, so yeah Based on my calcs, we should be winning here <laughs> uh, Now the thing is we have to be back because I actually have to plan our s Turns out so at turn three we can actually do that. So we will be back Okay, I think I got it the, the tricky part is getting the pivot and the pivot in while also uh, 
getting pe having peony not be in the way so i think the play is tr at the start of turn three we want to have um peony here nino here kaden can s just be somewhere where i guess here is fine so then the pl actually no he has to be here so peony nino kaden or something like that just just so he's uh within range to reposition you know so it actually just he just needs to be not in the way kind of a deal so then the play is because of ash's opening retainer mill is here so she can smite peony out of the way and then we can have ash use pivot and then we use Kaden to reposition, plop Nino there, and then we have Peony use uh, aerobatics to dance. So that's 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 the plan here. All right, let's do it. <laughs> How hard could it possibly be? Uh, I was thinking about breaking the tactics room because it is safe for us to break it. Uh, there's no drawback other than uh, wasting actions. <laughs> Pretty much. And from this location, Cajun is perfectly fine to... He can also teleport around, back around with Ash. Wait, I'm not mistaken that it is safe, right? <laughs> Watch it not be safe and I'm just like going to facepalm so hard. Because someone has would have to be able to attack from there and that's impossible, so... I'm pretty certain that this is fine, because few arms hits end turn. Yes. Alright. Now we need Peony here. We can break the Golden Throne. Lovely. Like this. Okay, Smite's ready, Pivot's ready. I guess we can keep air here. I don't think there's any disadvantage to doing that. Watch, I hope this works. This would be so galaxy brain amazing <laughs> if it works out, but we probably made an inaccuracy with like damage calcs or something. So it's not gonna work out, but um, it would be funny if we pulled it off uh, for sure. Alright, I think we're ready to go right now. Because the smite happens, reposition, dance. Yeah, I, I think this is fine. We don't need any defense buff or anything. Alright, here we go. Did we goof our setup? <laughs> this is going to be so galaxy brain. I don't know what to think. Actually, could we just attack Fiorm? Hold up. I didn't real. I for. I don't know why it didn't occur to me that that could be an option. Uh, let's do this. Order matters here. So we pivot. You repo. I kind of doubt Nino kills here. She actually does. Um, in that case, do we want to do that? Huh. I'm almost inclined to not do that because we probably, if we do, if we, if our, all our calcs and stuff are correct, um, in terms of special charges, it doesn't matter because we're going to get double attacked anyways. I think we're just going to stick to our game plan uh, and do this. What could possibly go wrong, am I right? <laughs> Alright, well, yeah, I think this is fine. I guess this... This could go really wrong. Let's see how it goes here. 23 times 2. We hit the 33 that we predicted. Catcher goes first as expected. Should be Fiandra next. Now it should be Brave Edelgard. We're at 46 HP. Marianne should attack here. We survive with the 21 times 2 that we predicted. Oh. 
What? Fjorm actually... What? Wait. Why did Requiem dance proc? Oh, wait. No, duh, because not... <laughs> But I still had her action. You can't get... Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, well, she was hit by Tactics Room, which is cool, I guess. But what do we do with that? I guess we can do something with that. We could break uh, the Healing Tower. Uh, because, of course, we're going for the Flex. <laughs> we, we always got to go for the Flex. Uh, I think we just repo Nino. We, we can break the Healing Tower. Repo Nino, and then repo uh, Kaden out of there. Seems okay. Is there a better play we can make? Uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. I would ideally like Ash to be where Mila is right now. So then we could use air to break. I, I don't think it's too significant there. I think we're just overthinking it here. Yeah, we could just... Well, no, we're not... That's not really overthinking it, because... Okay, yeah, we could do that. Wait, that involves... How many actions does that involve? <laughs> I'm planning too many things in my head. And that's probably gonna stab me in the back real quick. <laughs> uh, let's do this. We're just gonna do that every time. I think it's just simple that way. Uh, we can reposition here. Reposition here. And then we could try engage uh, for a corner. Are we gonna try and corner her? We could. I think we will go for that play. Uh, we can actually just put Mila here to be even more. Because there's so much mobility here. Yeah. So here's the fun part. We can smite in Ash. And then we can teleport. <laughs> we can teleport Nino all the way over here. And Air all the way over here. That is so funny. That is just ridiculous. What kind of mobility is this man? And then we can even dance Kaden like this and break the ether. What in the world is this mobility? I'm gonna... It's gonna take a long time to get used to this kind of mobility, let me tell you that. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely give Ash the kill here because uh, that was insane mobility. It actually worked. We actually calced everything right for once, except for the Requiem dance part. <laughs> Fortunately, Nino was already in Brazen range at that point, so Fjorm, of course, with Ice Mirror, did not stand a chance against the Wrath of Nino. But what in the world was that match? That was that was fun. <laughs> that that's why we do our daily damage calcs. So when we actually do it right, <laughs> when we actually do it right for once, it actually pays off. But uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!